Alle Bett, Bett, Kimmel, Gold, Hey, Bob, Sein, Rett, Ted, Jud, Kopf, Kopf, Blau, Med, Mann, und Sommer, Rhein, Pei, Pizza, die Kuh, Reisch, Schimpf, Sim, Top, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series of Hebrew lessons for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to pronounce and read and understand Hebrew. I'm Mark Golub, as always. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for the lovely emails you've been sending us. All of us who help produce this series appreciate it more than words can say, and we just hope you'll keep on being in touch with us. Well, you've learned all the Hebrew letters, you've learned all the Hebrew vowels. It's time to work on how to pronounce virtually any word you see. And before I begin to put some words up on the screen, I want to remind you, the key to reading Hebrew is the Shiva, Mitsuyan. The Shiva is the only set of dots in Hebrew which is not a vowel. And remember the rule, a shva is never counted as a vowel. A shva is never counted as a vowel. And there are two kinds of shvas, you'll remember that also. There's the silent shva, which ends or closes a syllable. And when there is a silent shva, it simply tells you to add the letter above the silent shva to the preceding letter and vowel. It's as if a silent shva extends a syllable by one additional Hebrew letter. The silent shva always ends or closes a Hebrew syllable. And then there is the pronounced shva. And as a silent shva closes a syllable, a pronounced shva begins a syllable. And the key for you here is to understand when to recognize a pronounced shva that begins a Hebrew syllable. And we've taught you three important times or rules when you see a shva that you should know it does begin a syllable. And there are some other times that a shva does begin a syllable, but for our purposes, the three examples we give you, the three rules we give you, are really the rules that will extend to most of the Hebrew words you see. So we're going to once again review the three rules, the three times that you see a shva and you know it is pronounced. A shva is pronounced and does begin a syllable when it comes under the first letter of a word. That's obvious. If it's under the first letter of a word, it must begin a syllable. A shva is also pronounced and begins a syllable if it is the second of two shvas in a row. And that should be pretty obvious, since if the first shva ends a syllable, the next letter with a shva must begin a syllable. So you always divide a word between two consecutive schwas. The second of two consecutive schwas is always pronounced and always begins a syllable. And the third rule, when a schwa appears under a letter with a dagesh in it, with a dot in it, that schwa is also pronounced. So those are the three rules. Under the first letter of a word, the second of two schwas in a row, and under a letter with a dagesh. In all of those instances, the schwa is pronounced as a short I, as in the English word fish, I. But even though it's pronounced as the vowel I, in Hebrew, it is never counted as a vowel. It is, in essence, what we call a grace note. Every vowel in Hebrew is a quarter note, but a schwa is a grace note that is added to the following vowel to make one Hebrew syllable. And we've taught you that if you count the dots and dashes, if you count the vowels in a Hebrew word, you know how many syllables are in that word. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship between vowels and syllables in the Hebrew language. It's one of the reasons why Hebrew is so easy. But when you see a shva, even if it's pronounced, it is never counted as a vowel, and therefore when you count the number of vowels in a word to know how many syllables in a word, you never count the shva. 
And with those rules in place, let's take a look at a few Hebrew words and see if you can determine where the words should be broken up into syllables and how these words should be pronounced. We're going to begin with words that only have silent schwa's in them. And here's your first Hebrew word. Notice that there are two vowels, so there are two syllables. And under the lamed is a schwa. The schwa under the lamed does not come under the first letter of a word, is not the second of two in a row, is not under a letter with a dot in it, and therefore this schwa is silent. And we would draw a line after the lamed to divide this word into its two syllables. Can you read the first syllable? If you said yal, you would be correct. The yud with a patach followed by the lamed. What about the second syllable? Da is correct. Mitsuyan, the dalid with the kamats and the hay. Put the word together and you get yal da, mitsuyan. The shva under the lamed is silent. It tells you to simply add the lamed to the preceding vowel and letter, the yud and the patach to create the first syllable yal, the second syllable da, and if you can read this word, you can essentially read virtually any simple Hebrew word you ever see. This is a two-syllable word, yal da, and by the way, it means girl in Hebrew. The way to say girl in Hebrew is yal da. Here's another word with a silent shva. Try this word. Notice it's built the same way as Yalda is built. Two vowels, so there are two syllables. Never count the Shva. What would the first syllable be? Mal is correct. The Shva under the Laman tells you to add the Laman to the preceding letter and vowel, Ma, to make the entire syllable Mal. And the second syllable, Ka, Mitsuyan. That's a Kaf with a patach and a hay. Put the word together. Malka mitsuyan. And the word malka means. That's a beautiful queen on the screen. That's right. Malka means queen. And it's built on the root. Mem, lamed, kaf. And remember that all Hebrew words are built on three letter roots. And you know the root mem lamed kaf from the word melech mitsuyan. The kaf becomes final at the end of the word melech. And melech means king mitsuyan. And the word melech is the word upon which malka is built. And malka means queen mitsuyan. Here's yet another simple word. Two vowels, two syllables. See if you can read this Hebrew word. Again, there's a silent shva under the samech. And don't make the mistake of thinking that the second letter in this word is a final mem. First of all, a final mem only comes at the end of a word. And a final mem does not have a slice in it in the lower right-hand corner. So that's a samech as the second Hebrew letter. Can you read the first syllable of this two-syllable word? And this, by the way, is a proper noun. It's someone's name. First syllable is S, Mitsuyan. Segol under the Aleph. And how about the second syllable? Ter is right. Put the word together. Esther, Mitsuyan. What do you think the word Esther means? Esther is correct. It is the name of a Malka. There is the Malka named Esther. Esther, the queen of the Purim story of the Megillah, Mitsuyan. Okay, here's word number four. And now we've added another vowel. This is a three vowel word, and therefore it's a three syllable word. And what's the second letter that has a silent shva under it? Right, it's the sin, not the shin. The shin would have the dot on the right-hand side. 
the sin has the dot on the left hand side, Mitsuyan. So the first syllable would be Yis, Mitsuyan. What kind of schwa is under the sin? Silent is correct. That schwa does not come under the first letter of a word. It is not the second of two in a row. And there is no dot inside the sin. Don't be mistaken by the dot on top of the sin. A schwa is only pronounced if a sin has a dagesh in it. And here you have a silent schwa under the sin, and the first syllable becomes yis, mitsuyan, hirik, under the yud. Second syllable, ra, mitsuyan, simply a letter and a vowel, the resh with the kamats. There's no schwa anywhere, so the syllable is simply ra. And the third syllable, Ale, Mitsuyan, the Aleph with the Tsere followed by the Lamed. The Lamed actually, of course, has a silent Shva under it. Every letter at the end of a word, if it does not have a vowel, has a silent Shva under it. It's just understood, and therefore we don't write it. So the first syllable is Yis, the second syllable is Ra, the third syllable is Ale. Put the word together, you get... Yisrael, Mitsuyan. And of course, Yisrael is the word for Israel in English. It refers either to the Jewish people as a whole. We are called the children of Israel, Yisrael. It also refers to the country, the state of Israel, Medinat Yisrael. It's one of the most important words you can read. And now you can read it. It is Yisrael, Mitsuyan. Let's now go to words with pronounced schwas in them. And we're going to take the first rule. A schwa is always pronounced if it's under the first letter of a word. So here are some words with the schwa under the first letter. And we begin with a word you know. Take a look at this word. How many vowels? If you said one, you are correct. Even though the shva is pronounced, we never count a shva as a vowel. And therefore, in this word, there is only one syllable. How would you pronounce this one syllable word? Shema is correct. Not shema, but shema. And what does shema mean? Very good. It means hear or listen. And the shema is the first word in what may be called the most important line in the Jewish tradition, the line that is said when one goes to sleep at night, when one wakes up in the morning. And for many people, it is the last thing they ever say if they know they're about to pass away. It is the prayer called the Shema. And it begins with the two words that you now can read and understand. Shema Yisrael, Mitsuyan. Shema Yisrael, listen or hear, Israel. And of course, the rest of it is in English. Listen, Israel, Adonai is our God and Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael, listen, Israel, or hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. So there's a word with a pronounced shva under the first letter. Here's another one. And again, it's a word you know. And the word is peri, mitsuyan. It's not peri, but Peri, a one-syllable word. And if you add this other word to it, hagafen, you get a phrase that you know, prehagafen. And prehagafen means fruit of the vine. It normally refers to grapes. Fruit of the vine, mitsuyan, mitsuyan. Here is a two-syllable word because there are two vowels in it. But again, it begins with a pronounced schwa because the Shiva is under the first letter of the word. Can you read the first syllable of this word? It's a word you know. Bira is correct, Mitsuyan, Bira. And the second syllable, Cha, Mitsuyan. Put the word together. Bracha is correct, and Bracha means a blessing. Mitsuyan. When you say a blessing over the fruit of the vine, you are reciting a bracha, a blessing. 
And finally, one more word with a pronounced fa under the first letter, and you know this word. The first syllable would be Tzida Mitsuyan. It's a tsari as the first letter. A pronounced fa under it, followed by a dalid with a kamats. Tzida. And the next syllable, Ka Mitsuyan. Put the word together. Tzidaka, Mitsuyan, Tzidaka. And Tzidaka comes from the three letter root, Tsari, Dalit, Kuf, which means righteousness, righteous. And to do righteousness, one does Tzidaka. And Tzidaka is often translated as charity. But in fact, if you understand that Tzidaka comes from the root, Tsari, Dalit, Kuf, to be righteous or righteousness, you understand that any act of kindness and righteousness in terms of the Jewish tradition is tzedakah. It's also why tzedakah is not optional in the Jewish tradition as it is in American society. Tzedakah is a mitzvah, a commandment. It is a necessity to be as kind and gentle and righteous as one can possibly be. Tzedakah is an obligation, a mitzvah, for the Jewish tradition. But tzedakah, as you see on the screen, is a word that begins with a pronounced shva, since the shva is under the first letter of a word. Okay, let's take a look at shvas under a dagesh. Take a look at this Hebrew word. How many vowels in the word? Two is correct. And the shva under the second letter, under the Zion, is under a letter with a dagesh. That's a dagesh inside the Zion. And therefore, you know the Zion must begin a Hebrew syllable. So where would you draw a line in this word to divide the word into two syllables? Would you draw it after the Zion? No, you would not, because it's a pronounced shva. And a pronounced shva cannot end a syllable, it must begin a syllable. Therefore, you would draw the line in this word after the bet, mitsuyan. The first syllable would simply be ba, mitsuyan. That's a simple ba. And the second syllable would be ziman, mitsuyan, ziman, not zi. Man, but Zeman. Put the word together, you get Bazeman, Mitsuyan, a word you'll recognize from certain Hebrew blessings, Bazeman. And Zeman means time or season, and Bazeman means at the time or the season. Bazeman, Mitsuyan. Try this Hebrew word again with a Shva under a Dagesh. This is a word from the Friday night Kiddush, the blessing to make the Shabbat holy. And you'll notice that the first three letters of this word is a root you know, kuf, dalid, shin. We've shown you this before. The root kuf, dalid, shin always has something to do with holiness, mitsuyan. So how many vowels in this Hebrew word? If you said three, you are correct. The hirik under the kuf, the kamats under the shin, and the shuruk after the nun. And therefore it's a three syllable word. First syllable, ki, mitsuyan. We wouldn't say kid because the dalit has a pronounced shva, and a pronounced shva always begins a syllable. So the first syllable is ki. The second syllable, where would you draw the line? after the second syllable. And remember, every syllable has to have one vowel and can only have one vowel. If you drew the line after the shin, you would be correct. And you might say, why can't I draw it after the nun? Well, the nun does not have a silent shva, so you wouldn't add it to the preceding letter and vowel. And the nun will begin the third syllable of this word. So you draw the line after the shin, and the second syllable would simply be disha, mitsuyan, disha. And the third syllable, nu, mitsuyan. Put the word together, 
Ki deshanu, ki deshanu. And again, the Dalit has a pronounced shva. We wouldn't say ki deshanu, and you'll hear many people say that. But the actual pronunciation of this word is ki deshanu, nitsuyan. And kadosh is the word holy, the root holy. Ki deshanu is he made us holy. Ki deshanu, made us holy, nitsuyan. And now let's take a look at words where you have two shvas in a row. And remember, whenever you have two shvas in a row, the word is always divided between the two shvas because the second of two shvas in a row is always pronounced. The first shva would always be silent, ending a syllable. The second shva would always be pronounced because it must begin the next syllable. So this is really easy. Where would you draw the line in this Hebrew word? Obviously, there are two syllables, the patach under the nun and the kamatz inside the final chaf. You would divide the word between the two shvas after the fe. The first syllable would be pronounced naf mitsuyan. And the second syllable would be pronounced shecha mitsuyan. Shecha. Put the word together. Naf shecha, mitsuyan, naf shecha. And of course, nefesh is soul in Hebrew. The final chaf at the end of a noun is the pronoun your. Naf shecha would be your soul. Naf shecha. Let's take one more with two shvas in a row. Again, how many vowels are in this word? Two is correct. You would draw the line to divide this word into two syllables, always between the two shvas. So after the zayin, mitsuyan, the first syllable would be pronounced tiz, mitsuyan. And the second syllable, keru, mitsuyan. Keru, but it would be pronounced as one syllable, keru, as if the shva under the cuff is a grace note. Keru. Tiz Kiru, Mitsuyan. And Tiz Kiru comes from the Hebrew root, Zion, Kaf, Resh, which always has something to do with remembering. And Tiz Kiru means you will remember. Tiz Kiru, you will remember. And the trick here is to understand how to use the Shiva when it is pronounced, when it is silent how to divide the word into syllables. And finally, I want you to take a look at a couple of words that have in it both a silent shva and a pronounced shva. If you can read these words, you can read any Hebrew word you'll ever see. And again, even I fall into the habit of saying read. I'm really talking about pronouncing. I want you to be able to read and pronounce any Hebrew word you see. If you remember the rules of the shva, you can do it. Take a look at these Somewhat complicated words, but if you remember the rules of the shva, you can break this word into syllables and pronounce it without any trouble. Alex, let's put the first word up on the screen. Okay. I love this word. By the way, the words I'm going to show you right now all come from the paragraph known as the Ve'ahavta, which is a paragraph from the book of Deuteronomy that is part of the Shema. But take a look now at this word. First of all, how many vowels are in this word? You should say two, mitsuyan. There are two vowels in this word, and therefore two syllables. The hirik under the shin, and the final chaf has a kamatz inside it. And you see, however, this word has not one, not two, but three shvas. Is the first shva under the bet pronounced or silent? If you said pronounced, you are correct. It's under the first letter of a word. Is the shva under the vet pronounced or silent? If you said silent, you are correct. It is not under the first letter of a word. It is not under a letter with a dagesh. It is obviously not the second of two in a row. In fact, it's the first of two in a row. And therefore, you know right away that the third shva, the one under the tuf, is pronounced. 
because it is the second of two in a row and because it's under a letter with a dagesh in it. And you always divide a word between the two shvas. And therefore, can you read the entire first syllable? Take a moment. Can you read the entire first syllable? If you said beshiv, you are correct. Beshiv. The b does not stand alone. It would have no vowel. Every syllable must have a vowel. So you add the shiv to the preceding bet with a pronounced shva. And the first syllable is beshiv. And the second syllable is techa, mitsuyan. Put the word together. Beshiv techa. Beshiv techa. And again, that's about as hard as any normal Hebrew word ever gets. If you can read this word, Beshiv Techa, you can pronounce virtually any Hebrew word you see. And I'm going to give you an even harder Hebrew word. Try this word. Okay, how many shvas in this word? Three is correct. How many vowels in this word? Three is correct, Mitsuyan. The shuruk at the beginning of the word, the segol under the lamid, the kamats inside the final chaf. If there are three vowels, there are three syllables. And the hardest thing about this word is knowing what the first syllable of this word is. Many people think that the shva under the vet is silent and that therefore the first syllable would be Uv. Uv. But that is incorrect. Because the U at the beginning of the word, the shuruk, is a vowel, not a letter. The first letter of the word is the vet. And if a shva comes under the first letter of a word, it is pronounced. And therefore, the vet must begin the second syllable. It also means that Unusually, you have a syllable with only a vowel in it, and the vowel is the shuruk, u. And how could a vowel ever stand alone? Because the shuruk at the beginning of a word is the English word, and. And and is a prefix, can stand alone. And therefore, the u at the beginning of a word is the first syllable. The second syllable would be Velech, Mitsuyan. It couldn't be V, there'd be no vowel. It couldn't be Vele, because the letter after the Le is the Chaf with a silent Shva under it, telling you to add the Chaf to the preceding letter and vowel Le. It also is followed by another Shva, and we always know to divide the word between the two Shvas, and therefore the second syllable of this word is. Velech Mitsuyan. First syllable is U. The second syllable is Velech. And the third syllable is Ticha Mitsuyan. You put the word together, you get U Velech Ticha. And now we're really getting as complicated as Hebrew really ever gets. Once again, U Velech Ticha. If you want to know what it means, the U means and. Velech techa means when you walk. U velech techa, and when you walk. U velech techa, mitsuyan. And now one last word for you to look at as we try to show you how to pronounce Hebrew words. Take a look at this word. It actually is a word we've shown you before, but again, it has both a pronounced and a silent shva in it. How many vowels in this word? If you said three, you are correct. And how many shvas? Two, obviously. The first shva is pronounced, mitsuyan. It's under the first letter of a word and under a letter with a dagesh in it. How about the second shva? Right, it is silent. 
It's not under the first letter of a word. There's no dagesh in the tzari. And it's not the second of two in a row. It is the second shva of the word, but not in a row, not consecutive. And therefore it is silent, and it means that tzari will end a syllable. What would the first syllable of this three-syllable word be? If you said bemitz, you are correct. Bemitz. And now the difficult part of the word. What's the second syllable? It looks like it's a vowel without a letter. You can't add what looks like a cholam malay to the tzari because the tzari already has its own shva. And every Hebrew letter can only have one or the other. Every Hebrew letter must have either a shva or a vowel, but no Hebrew letter can have both. So since the tzari already has a silent shva, what looks like a cholam male cannot go with the tzari, but inside a word, a vowel can't stand alone. The only time a vowel ever comes alone is the shuruk that we saw a moment ago when it stands for the English word and as a prefix to a word. Inside a word, no vowel can stand alone. There must be a Hebrew letter here somewhere. And lo and behold, there is. This is not a chola male. It's actually the Hebrew letter vav with a cholam chaser, the O on top of it. And again, we've done this before. Alex, as you move the dot of the cholam to the left, it would be more obviously a cholam chaser. But Hebrew takes that little dot, the O, and moves it on top of the vav, so it looks exactly like a cholam male, but in fact, it's a vav with the vowel O on top of it, and therefore the second syllable of this word is vo, mitsuyan, vo. And the last syllable is tav, mitsuyan. And remember that a kamatz followed by a yud inside a word does not change sound, and therefore this word is bemitz vo tav. Bemitz vo tav. Mitsuyan. And mitzvah, of course, means commandment. And mitzvot means commandments. A vav at the end of a noun is the third person singular, his. So mitzvot tav is his commandments. And a bet at the beginning of a word as a prefix is the English word with. Bemitzvot tav with his commandments. And if you read this word, Bemitzvotav, again I say, you can read virtually any Hebrew word you see in the sense of being able to pronounce it. And that is how you break words up with silent and pronounced shvaz. And again, if you've had any trouble with this lesson, watch it again, because this is the lesson that begins to show you how to break words up, complicated words, into easy blocks of Hebrew syllables. And once you do that, there's no Hebrew word you can't read in the sense of pronouncing. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet and then click on the very first option from the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Lamed, Mem, Yom, Samech,